Ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to the Nine Any Know It All podcast. I'm your host, Josh, the Nine Any Know It All, and I'm hoping things don't sound too differently with the way I'm doing it. I'm actually kind of standing up and doing my podcast in my room, or my bedroom, because my wife and daughters are out in the other area. So I'm standing up. I also want to stand up because I'm trying to get rid of what I'm calling the COVID-20. Now, we all know about the freshman 15, but I've decided that I want to get rid of the COVID-20 because it kind of feels like that's how much um, I've gained this, what, six months. So I'm trying to do that, doing a lot more working out, got a little thing that I'm doing, going for walks. And so, you know, trying to get healthier. I think that's something that's big and give me a little more energy. And, and honestly, I'm trying to get ready for next year because I want to hit so many baseball games next year that I know I've got to get in better shape, get my legs underneath me and be ready to go. So yeah, I'm trying to get rid of my COVID-20. That's what I'm calling it. I don't care if anybody else has said it before. I, I'm coining the phrase, the COVID-20. Forget the freshman 15. Just trying to get healthier. You know, it's something that's been important for me. I know, obviously, during this last six months, it, there's been a lot of uh, struggles for everybody with everything going on. And that plays a lot onto you mentally. And, you know, having worked in um, a mental health crisis department, I was the administrative manager for the county I live in and another county for for a time. Uh, one of the things I learned is mental health is important and physical health plays right into that as well. So if you're out there and you're you know having troubles mentally, you're struggling, you know, working out does help you out and talking to people. If you ever need someone to talk to, you know, contact not any know it all. I'll be there to talk to you guys. I know other people you can talk with as well. Talk to coaches, talk to teammates. You know, mental health is a big thing that's important to me, important to a lot of people. So I'm telling you guys, if you ever need to talk to someone, let me know. You know, that's what I'm here for. And there's coaches and players all across the nation who are who feel the same way. They'll talk to you if you need the help. So just kind of my own little, you know, PSA, throwing it out there. You know, just kind of telling you guys what I'm going through and, you know, that I'm trying to get a little bit healthier. And, and you know, I hate it. I hate working out, but it is what it is. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and jump right into our topic for today. And as I'm sure you guys all know, because I say it, I think I say it every podcast at least five or six times, I love the NWAC conference, and I love the players and the coaches who are a part of that. And today, I have another guest from that conference because, once again, I love that conference. And my guest today is Noah Briarton. He's a member of the Centralia Community College team. Noah, how are you doing? I'm doing just fine tonight, Josh. How are you doing? Doing pretty good. So, no, obviously it's been, you know, a crazy year and all that type of stuff. But for you, I mean, you're now back on campus and aren't you getting stuff ready to go for this fall? Yeah, absolutely. We, um, we're technically right now in our little two week quarantine period where we're just allowed to go out with our roommate and play catch and get our work in as pitchers and get our running in. But it's looking very different and just even practices when after this two week quarantine period, we moved to a different period where we're only allowed to have 10 guys, including the coaches. So practices and everything are going to look a little bit different this year for sure. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the things, you know, I've talked to a few coaches is the adjustments. And although there's some positives, like obviously, you know, you can work specifically with certain position groups that tough more than normal. For you as a pitcher, obviously, it's going to be somewhat similar, but somewhat dimmer, different because, you know, throwing a bullpen, you can't have – 40 guys doing bullpens. It's just got to be you and the catcher. So, so it won't change too much for you in a lot of ways, I would assume. Yeah, no, I don't think it's going to change too much for pitchers. It's definitely going to have a more of an effect on position guys for sure. And then, you know, for you, I mean, obviously you're into this fall, getting ready to, for things to start ramping up a little bit. What are some things that, you know, you're excited about things that you're looking forward to when it comes to fall practices? Oh, I'm excited to get back on a field with a group of guys that are ready to go to war and fight for all their position spots. And everyone's – I'm just missing the competitive aspect of playing ball, like having those live at-bats with pitchers. It's like having a live at-bat is uh, very different than throwing a flat ground and recording it and sending it off to the coach for, um, for review. It's just, yeah, the competitive aspect of baseball is something that I've missed a ton during this time of COVID-19. And then, you know, also – even schools will be a lot different. I know there are schools across the nation who are, you know, some are going back to campus, some are online. And I know most of Washington, if not all of Washington, is pretty much kind of online at this point. You know, how is that affecting you? Or is it something you can, you're getting through pretty easily? Or is it something you're kind of having to get used to? Yeah, I'm, uh, it was definitely something to get used to during the spring quarter last year. 
And uh, this fall quarter at Centralia, um, I'm actually on the student government team. So I've, I've been lucky enough to be on campus a lot. But I know for lots of our guys on the baseball team, it's been tough because they're online most of the time. And for my classes this quarter, I've got one class that's face-to-face. -face, so I got to be on campus a little bit more. But it's definitely a big adjustment when you're used to face-to-face -to -face classes and then having to go all online. It's all about time management and being able to know when your stuff is due and it's all it's, the responsibility is all on the student athlete now which is I think it's a good thing for student athletes to be able to learn. Yeah and that's one of the things that you know having been around juco ball players both baseball and, and softball one of the things that I've realized is just the the mentality and the focus is a little bit different than a regular student um, because you guys have to plan out workouts, you have to plan practice, you have to plan classes. You guys have so much stuff going on each day that, you know, you really have to have your day planned out. And, and the online thing kind of gives you a, a little bit of freedom, but at the same time, you still have to have that, that plan. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, I've, I found even now with COVID, like I, you said, I have this free time, but uh, there's comes a time when that free time I need to be doing something and I'm, if I sit on my butt for too long, it's like, okay, I need to be doing something. What do I need to be doing? So I try to fill up my days very, very organized and scheduled. So I have set times when I can sit on my butt and um, watch TV or cook a meal for me and my roommate or something like that. But I try and be very, very organized when it comes to scheduling my life. <laughs> yeah. And that's one of the things that, you know, obviously will lead to success later on because, you know, you, you, like most players, you go to school because you want to play baseball, but you're really there to get the education for your, your career after sports. And, and this is a great way of kind of developing those skills for the future. And, and I think it's something that's kind of underrated that this might actually help you guys in the long run. Oh, I absolutely agree with that. Yeah, I think during this time where the onus is all on the student athlete and you don't have professors and teachers face-to-face uh, -to, -face to push you and get you to be your best student, you've got to do it yourself. And it's all about good communication with your professors over the emails and the Zoom calls and whatsoever. It's, uh, it's definitely going to better us in the long run. I definitely agree with that. Yeah, and then, you know, you know, obviously when this all started, you know, I know I was covering uh, lower Columbia down here, both the baseball and softball, and, and there was talk of different things going to happen. And, you know, it was kind of, you know, heartbreaking at the same time as just I kind of understood what was going on. But for you, before the season got shut down, you had – thrown a few innings, had pretty decent strikeout numbers. How was your season going initially, you know, before everything shut down? Yeah, my, my season personally, before everything got shut down, um, I have always been a guy who got our, my team deep into ball games and had very low strikeout numbers and just pitched to contact, got really weak contact. But this year, uh, last year at Centralia, Coach Ben and Coach Kavika, I really helped with developing my strength. And I lost a bunch of weight. And I came into Centralia sitting – 78 to 80 miles an hour top of my fastball but there was a time during season start I touched 85 and I was just really really amazed of the amount of work that I put it in and seeing the results and the strikeout numbers just I yeah I pitched six innings last uh, last spring and I had 12 strikeouts so just a whole different wave of pitching mentality and uh, everything was thrown at me and I ate it all up and the results uh the results came for especially with that strikeout number for sure. And that's going to be one of those things going into, you know, this school year, you know, even though your, your season was cut short last year, you at least got some experience. You got some understanding of what the college game is like, and, and that's going to give you some good confidence and even kind of allows you to know what you need to focus on as you prepare for next season. Oh, 100%. Yeah. The, the, the jump from high school baseball to college baseball was uh, immense is the word I would use is because uh, especially with off speed pitches in, in, in high school, you can throw a, change up down the middle and it'll get whiffed at just because of the speed difference but I remember so vividly in my first college start I threw a change up and I left it at the belt and uh one of Edmonds hitters ripped it for a double and I said yep this is definitely college baseball because in high school that pitch might have been rolled over or even swung and missed on but in college that pitch is going to get crushed every time so just that jump from high school to college was a very big thing for me and I'm sort of grateful that I had that little practice I'm going to call it a practice year uh to develop and see what the college game is all about. Yeah, and that's actually a, a great approach. And I talked to a few other guys who were freshmen last year. And, and for them, you know, that change from high school to, to college was immense. You know, it's, it's one of those things where as a hitter, guys are throwing harder at you. As a pitcher, guys have better swings. It's just more developed. And so to have that kind of little understanding of, hey, this is different. Things got to – I got to ramp myself up a little bit more. You know, it's, it's good. And then for you – I mean, what are some big things you've really tried to focus on, you know, these last six months as you prepare? Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
the three things that I'm really trying to focus on uh, this year to be just become a better athlete overall are um, lots of flexibility stuff, um, lots of explosive movement things, and then having strength in my legs to be able to load um, my back leg when driving down the mound to throw that extra couple miles per hour. Yeah, and that's that's one of the things that I don't think people always realize that, yeah, coming out of high school, yeah, guys may not throw hard, but at the JUCO level, and especially here at the NWAC, I mean, guys can throw the ball. I mean, guys are throwing mid-80s. A lot of guys are touching 90 nowadays. You know, the JUCO level has some serious arms, and so, I mean, it takes some serious work to be able to compete. Oh, 100%, yeah. And the, one of the things I loved most about last year is just seeing – everyone getting into the weight room and taking practices so seriously and everyone was competing for uh for spots in the rotation and stuff like that like it was just everyone was pushing each other to be a better person and a better athlete which is one thing i i loved and then you know one of the things that coaching staff up in centralia there's been a, a shift in kind of the mentality you know because i've obviously covered the nwac since 2015 and and Centralia's had a, a definite shift in mentality, and, and that's in definite large part to the coaching staff, and especially for the pitchers. I like the fact that, you know, Coach Ben, he's really been kind of pushing development of all you guys and promoting all you guys. What's it like to have him as a, as a coach? Yeah, I can't say enough good things about Ben Harley. He, that guy is um, not only really, really easy to talk to as a coach, but he's also not afraid to tell you what his thoughts are whether whether they're good or they're uh, instructional or whatever, but he just the uh, this all the knowledge he brings to our pitching staff, um, being driveline certified, and we now have a Rap Soto down in the Centralia facility, and just learning all the stuff about spin rate and ball movement and the axis of which you throw the ball. I, I've learned so much from him, and I can also say that I can call him a friend, even though he's my coach. It's uh, he's he's been an absolute blessing to work with, and I yeah I can't wait for this year and spending time with him even more this year. Now for you as a player. Are you looking back at your last, you know, year from when you first started college to now, are you surprised at how much you've learned in that time when it comes to pitching? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Just mechanically wise, so many different things. Um, when I came there, I started my windup on the left side of the rubber, but Ben described to me how I should be starting on the right side of the rubber for better angle and more efficient movement patterns. Um, I've learned so much about uh, athleticism and movement patterns as a whole when it comes to stretching um, and we call it a thing called activation down in trailer where we warm up our, our joints. Um, it's like a pre-warm-up warm-up where we activate our body and get our body ready to go for practice. Um, and then like grips and stuff. I've been messing around with, uh, I used to throw just three pitches, but I'm trying to add a fourth pitch in there this year. And um, yeah, no, just all the pitching stuff. I've, I've learned so much in the year and two months it's been since I've joined this program. You know, and for you, I mean, you mentioned you're, you're trying to throw a fourth pitch. And, you know, a lot of people who don't understand the game think, oh, well, you just grab the ball and throw it differently. And it's that easy. But really, there's a lot more to it. What are some things you've had to really focus on as you're trying to develop that fourth pitch? <laughs> the main thing while trying to develop this fourth pitch is learning that um, failure is going to come before success. There are going to be times in during bullpens when I'm going to spike uh, five sliders in a row before throwing one that I like. Um, and you know what? Baseball is a game of failure. So being a baseball player, uh, it's you've got to learn that failure is always going to come, become b before success. So uh, that's been a really, really big thing for me when trying to develop this fourth pitch. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the things that that's one of the things I love about baseball is the fact that you can fail, and no one's going to look at you and go, "Oh, you failed, so therefore you're a failure." It's it's the attitude of, "Hey, you failed, so let's see what we have to do differently, so you don't fail the next time or fail as much as you have been." Oh, 100 percent. Yep. Yeah. The, the greatest players in this game, uh, the greatest hitters fail seven out of 10 times. Like people, yeah, people who don't know the game of baseball just don't realize that failure is such a such a big part of baseball. And then for you, I mean, obviously you're playing at Centralia, but you're actually from British Columbia, which obviously is still kind of the Northwest. We're all connected in this area. But what actually got you to come down from British Columbia to play at Centralia? Yeah, the big thing for me was um, I've been blessed. I, I'm a dual citizen, so my dad was born in the United States, and I applied for my dual citizenship back when I was 13 uh, with the intention to possibly go and play uh, college baseball somewhere. And, um, yeah, I was actually at the Baseball Northwest Championships, uh, just and it was in Centralia. And I remember I pitched uh, a game, and I pitched fairly well, and Coach Kavika came up to me after the game, and he said, hey um, – 
I really liked what I saw. Like, would you be down uh, to come on a campus tour sometime? And that was my first ever scholarship offer. I had a, a few more after the fact of Centralia, but Centralia always had a special place in my heart. One, because they were that first scholarship offer. And two, everything just sort of clicked with what I was looking for and what they were looking for, needing a lefty arm. Um, everything just clicked and I ended up in Centralia. And this, yeah, during this first year and a couple months here, I've, I've loved it and I wouldn't want to have gone anywhere else for my JUCO ball experience. Yeah, and that's an area, you know, obviously I'm down in Kelso, so about 40 minutes away, but Centralia, Chehalis, that area, it, it's it's big enough to be a city, but there's there's so much around it that you can go and do. It's just, I I guess you could say the whole Northwest is like that, but I just love this area. It's, it's just beautiful to be around and play baseball. It's maybe some of the best settings for baseball in the country, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, we are, yeah, especially in Centralia, that Wheeler Field Park, we are so blessed with a first of all a great stadium in Ed Wheeler's uh, field, and then we got all these uh, other uh, fields around it where they have the baseball North championship, and not to mention this big massive facility, the the sports hub, where we are lucky enough to practice in the fall when it's pouring rain. We can go inside and get all of our work in practice wise at that turf indoor facility. And yeah, Centra it's it's very it's a small town, but we're very blessed with how uh, how nice the baseball facilities are down here. Yeah, it is. And then, you know, once again, you're from British Columbia. So, I mean, obviously, once again, we're still kind of the Northwest, still connected, but there's got to be some differences between baseball up there and baseball down here. What are some things you've noticed, even weather-wise, that are variations of the game of baseball? Yeah, the biggest thing um, in Canada is there is no high school baseball. So my high school baseball experience was just club baseball with a team called the White Rock Tritons, and we play in the British Columbia Premier Baseball League. Um, so having no high school baseball was just, uh, like I tell, I tell everyone that in the U S and everyone's a little bit shocked, but my baseball experience was traveling around British Columbia, um, playing a 48 game season in this premier baseball league and getting recruited and scouted from that instead of having high school teams and worrying about junior varsity and varsity. But yeah, the big thing in Canada is yeah, high school baseball is non-existent right now. You know, and, and even though that, that seems weird to us down here, that's gotta be in some ways, a positive because you guys get to play more games, travel more. I mean, that's going to be just a fun experience overall to be able to kind of be set free and just to go play baseball. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, my high school baseball experience was amazing. Uh, I, I loved it. I, pl I, I started playing in the, in the Premier League uh, when I was in grade eight and we're all the way up through my senior year in high school. And I, our team made two national championships and we won a provincial, couple of provincial titles and just so many options traveling wise. We went down to Arizona and Florida and a couple of tournaments in Washington here. And it was, it was an awesome experience. And the fun part about it is that the group of guys rarely change. Whereas in high school baseball here, you have the seniors who leave. Whereas this team, we sort of stuck together since we were in uh, grade eight. So it was, uh, yeah, I love my high school baseball experience. And then you mentioned you've got a chance to play it at a number of different places. In your in your playing career, what has been your favorite stadium, your favorite place to play so far? Oh, that's a that's an awesome question. You know what? The one that uh, sticks out to me um, is just two years ago, uh, my team, the Tritons, made it to the Canadian National Championships, and it was held in London, Ontario, and we got to play. I think it was called Labatt Park. And for all you baseball historians out there, uh, Labatt Park is the oldest recognized baseball stadium in all of North America. So I got to play at a little piece of history in downtown London, Ontario, with a beautiful view of the skyline. That field is maintained by the city, not by the team. So it was gorgeous every single day we played there. It was, uh, it was absolutely an unreal experience and not something I'll never forget. That is something I did not know, but now I got to put that on my baseball bucket list because that just sounds like a, like a cool place just to drive by even. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's gorgeous, and it's uh, one of the prides of London, Ontario, for sure. And then you mentioned you were part of the, the national champion or national tournament. What was it like to be a part of that? Because, you know, I've, I've been here in Longview when they've had Babe Ruth World Series, and I know the experience you guys have, but what was it like for you going to play in a tournament like that? Yeah, it was awesome. It was uh, all over the big broadcast um, in TV uh, center in Canada called uh, CBC. So we got to play on TV was something I could check off my bucket list, and uh, – there were lots of fans at the game pre-coronavirus, uh, and just the way that the tournament treated every single player was uh, was awesome. You had a little banquet at the start of it, and all the teams were there just having a blast together because we're all in the same hotel, and uh, it was just a great experience overall. 
Yeah, that's, you know, tournaments like that are a lot of fun. And, and obviously players go there to try and win championships. But at the same time, you almost are just in awe of what's going on. And it's just, you know, it's fun. I know for me as a media person and photographer covering that, it's just, it's so breathtaking, so amazing to be able to say, yeah, I was a part of that and got to at least see what was going on. Absolutely. Yeah, it was awesome. And it was even a little bit of a cherry on top. Our Team BC took home the bronze medal. Uh, that two years ago. So I've got a little piece of memorabilia with me for life. That is awesome. And then obviously for you to, to get to where you're at now, you know, to be able to play college ball, it, it takes obviously time and hard work, but it also takes people motivating you, pushing you. Who in your life has been the motivators to keep you going and keep you at your best? Yeah. So big ones, uh, I'm sure you hear a lot of the parents. Um, if you had told me that I would have uh, a chance to play my favorite game in the world, while have, uh, uh, having my school pay for a, a little chunk of it and get to go down and be independent and start becoming a grown man. Uh, if you had told me that when I was like 10 or 11, I would have like just been in awe and sort of laughed at you said, yeah, yeah, right, that's a nice dream. But now to actually be sort of doing it and living in this small town four hours away from home, um, I have no one to thank but my, my parents for sure. They just, uh, my mom was always driving me to practices and my dad was uh, the, the another athlete of the house and he, was they were just there at every game. My grandparents were there at every game. And then I, my high school PE teacher, um, Mr. Walker, he and I would talk baseball every single day, and he just sort of increased my love for the game even more. So those are definitely the people I would have to thank for um, my love for the game and where it's at today. Now, did your parents get to come down and see you play at all when you were at some, you know, your first year, or have they not been able to see you play yet? Yeah, so they uh, came down from my first collegiate start at uh, Edmonds Community College last year, which is actually nice because it was right in the middle. So Centralia, we drove up an hour and a half to Edmonds, and my parents drove down uh, two hours to Edmonds for that for that game, and it was cool that we got to experience that all together. Yeah, that, that's one of the nice things. that I always love seeing parents, you know, be able to make it to the, to the games, be able to see, especially their players, maybe first pitch, first at bat, whatever like that. But, you know, and obviously the Northwest is kind of spread out, but for you, like you said, going up there and playing at Edmonds, and maybe if you guys play at you know Skagit, other places, there's teams obviously that are closer to you, your home. Gives you guys, you know, your parents a chance to come watch you. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, if Centralia ever gets a series with the Douglas College Royals, I might just have to stay the night at my house because it's only 20 minutes away from my home. <laughs> it's always nice to get a little home cooking for sure. Oh, absolutely. And then you know, obviously, you know, you're getting ready for to really jump into the fall, getting ready for next spring. What are some of your personal goals that you really have as you're preparing for, for this next season? What is, what is maybe the biggest thing you want to achieve come this spring? Yeah, so the big thing, um, like I said earlier, like I hit 85 in the spring um, last year, and that was a, more than I'd ever thought I would get to get to. And Coach Ben says, hey, Noah, if you get to 87 or 88, touching maybe 89 as a left-handed like there are going to be division one schools calling your name. So that little ringing in my head motivation is going to be throughout me through all the fall and all the winter, knowing that if I work my butt off and get stronger and get more flexible and get more athletic, that that 87 to 89 mile per hour range is going to get there eventually. And uh, to have a possibility at playing at a division one baseball school somewhere um, is a dream of mine. So having that little motivation ring in my head throughout this time was going to push me through those harder workouts and those practices where we're running our tails off. And I'm, I'm really excited to, to get back to it and grind for that goal of mine. And then, you know, obviously last spring, you know, as a team, you guys were, were showing really some signs of being a truly a competitive team in the West. So you guys looking at, at this spring, obviously the goal is to take the West. I mean, that is, that is the goal every year, but you know, as a team, you guys lost a few players, but you've gotten some new players in. What are you expecting as a team going into the next season as well? Oh, I'm, I am more than excited for this next year. Just even in this uh, time of uh, quarantine where we're only allowed to go and practice with roommates, there have been countless times where I've been out at the, at the field training and there have been guys in there uh, in the pouring rain just getting their work in. So I think our team mentality and our team focus and our team drive to win and want to be better is going to what's going to lead us to success this year. And with Coach Kavika and Ben at the helm, it's uh, it's going to be a really, really fun year for Centralia baseball and for Centralia baseball fans. Yeah, and that's one of the things, you know, obviously I've covered the NWAC for five years, and, and especially the West region. And, and this year, more than any year I think in the past, I think is going to be the most enjoyable for me to watch because I think that every West team 
is going to be competitive and even at times scary. And that's what makes NWAC and, and the West region so much fun to be a part of and be around because it really is great college baseball day in and day out. Yeah, and, and you know what? If, uh, if what I've been hearing about scheduling for baseball is that we might just have just division games, just a full slate of NWAC West games is going to be very, very entertaining for, for the people to come watch and see some really, really quality baseball for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I, I kind of hope it doesn't go that way, but at the same time, part of me is saying, oh, heck yeah, that would be so much fun to just to go see you guys really kind of, kind of beat each other up because, you know, even though Lower Columbia's got a great team and Tacoma's got a great team, there's still going to be a fight every game, every day, and every team knows it, and that's just, it's going to be fun. Oh, yeah, no, college, junior college baseball, and even in the NWACs, for the small, the small little appetizer of it that I had last year, um, it just gets me fired up for, uh, for this year and what's to come, and I know what's to come, um, and I'm, we're all trying to prepare for it, and uh, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a real fight in, this, in the West this year. I'm, I'm really excited for it. Yeah, absolutely, and I'm excited for that. I, I, I promise you, I think this year is going to be one of the best years ever, obviously with the talent, all that type of stuff. And then, Noah, the last question I have for you before I let you go, I mean, you're here, you, you get a play, and obviously when you go to games, there's always younger players around the fields watching games. What advice would you give to those younger players who are looking towards the future, hoping to play college ball like what you're doing? Yeah, the biggest advice I'd give to people who are uh, aspiring to play college baseball is uh, to be proactive. Uh, a big thing that I um, was really, really like adamant on is I would always be uh, texting and emailing coaches, um, emailing them my recruiting profile and videos, highlight videos and what uh, whatsoever. Um, I would say don't always wait for a coach to reach out to you. If if you reach out if you reach out to a school um, that you're interested in, it really really shows the coach that you care. And uh, not a ton of people do that nowadays. And just having that ownership of this is my college baseball career. This is my baseball career that I want to do something with. Um, having that ownership and putting it upon yourself to go and show the college coaches that you really care is a really, really big step. And I think any college coach would love to get a text from a player saying that they were interested um, in their program. So absolutely. Yeah, that, that's definitely something that you know, I try and tell guys, hey, if, if you reach out to them, they will at least talk to you. That's one of the things that – you know, coaches try and respect the players and they want to be respected back. And if you put the time in, they'll put the time in as well to at least talk with you. Uh, 100%. Absolutely. Well, Noah, I appreciate you coming on here. I love talking with NY guys. And I am truly excited because I want to get up to Centralia and watch you guys play because I have just, every time I've talked to someone, a part of the program, it's just high energy, high excitement for the year. And I'm pumped for this season. Oh, you're not the only one that's pumped for it. I'll tell you that much. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Noah. Have a good night. Thank you, Josh. You as well. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, once again, that was Noah Briarton. He is a member of the Centralia Community College baseball team. And I am not joking, guys. When I say the West is going to be competitive this year, it is going to be competitive. Teams that maybe haven't been strong in the last couple of years are now stacked with talent, they're hungry. They want it. And especially after a shortened season and a tough summer, teams want it even more, and especially when they get a chance to knock off the three-time reigning champion of Lower Columbia. Teams want to be the dog that knocks them off. That's what they want. That's what makes this division so much fun. This conference is going to be, it's going to be awesome next year. I am so pumped for it. But with that, guys, I'm calling it a, a podcast, calling it an episode. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, hey, Major League Baseball playoffs are just days away, and I'm pumped for that now as well. But, guys, I'll talk to you later. Until next time, be safe and catch some baseball.